Hey Mishpa here, and for once I am confused on what to do with this unit. I think he has some great potential, but Misha right now is, in my opinion, trying to do too many things at once. He has some really cool utility though, especially for a 4 star destruction unit. So today I will be discussing his potential playstyles, as well as explaining his kit and reviewing his Eidolons. I've also calculated his best relics and best light cones. I'll explain his main stats and stat goals, then finish by discussing pros and cons, and team compositions. If you like this guide, let me know with a like and a sub, and let me know below too if you ended up pulling for him. Misha is a 4 star ice destruction unit, and since he's a new ice destruction unit, it means he power creeps the last one, right guys? Anyways, at level 80 he has a weirdly high base HP at 1270, a base attack of 599, and a base defense of 396. He has a low base speed of 96, but compensates with a low energy cost of only 100. For trace priority, it will depend on what playstyle you run on him main DPS or a sub DPS role. Let's start his kit explanation with his ultimate, Lightning Lord. Sorry, I mean his ultimate, gonna be late. Misha has a default 3 hits per action. We'll see how we increase that, but when activating his ultimate, he will consume all hits per action to deal ice damage to a selected target once and then to a random enemy per hit remaining. This is a bounce attack following the same principles of any other ones. He can stack up to 10 hits and they can carry over waves. They also have a chance to freeze before each hit lands at a 20% base chance. Now at 20% base chance you have a 12% chance per hit to freeze enemies, which is pretty bad. However, when unlocking his first ascension passive, his base chance will increase to 100%, giving you now a 60% chance. However, this is only on the first hit of the ultimate, aka the one target that you select. Classic Hoyo wording. This does mean though that you can target who you want to freeze at least. After unlocking his second ascension passive, using his ultimate will also grant him 60% effect hit rate during the ultimate, now giving you an incredible 96% chance to freeze the first enemy, and a 20% chance to freeze on your hits afterwards. Freezing out of turn allows you to cancel enemy actions before they strike, or stop their second attack if they have two chained together. If the enemies have some freeze res or crowd control res, the chances drop a big chunk though, but this chance increase combined with the effect hit rate increase, makes his chances not too bad even versus those enemies. His talent, Horological Escapement, will grant him a hit per action for his ultimate as well as 1-2 to two energy whenever any ally consumes a skill point, including himself. This makes it so we need 7 skill points consumed maximum to hit his max ult potential. The energy gains are nice too, especially with that low cost ultimate. Misha's skill, Room Service, increases the hit per action of his next ultimate by 1. It consumes a skill point, so it will in fact give him 2 hits. This means 3 skills and an ally skill point consumption is all you need to max out his ultimate. His skill is also a blast attack, hitting 3 enemies and doing much more damage to the central target. His basic attack just whacks people with a broom, but his technique is very cool. He will the world enemies, freezing them in place. When entering battle against enemies, he gets 2 hits per action for his next ultimate. This technique is a dimension technique, meaning these hits will get added at the start of every wave. It also means you can't stack this with other dimension techniques. As for Traces, we saw his first two ascension passives, and his third will grant him a 30% crit damage boost to attacks versus frozen enemies. Considering his ult can freeze easily, this is a lot of free crit value. The freeze is before the hit too, so as long as you hit that chance, you'll gain this bonus for the ultimate hits. For trace stat bonuses, Misha will get 6.7% crit rate, a nice 22.4% ice damage bonus, and for some reason, 22.5% defense. Now let's check out his Eidolons. His E1 increases his ult's hits per actions depending on the number of enemies on the field when he casts it, up to 5. This can go over the cap for a new total of 15 hits per ult. His E2 grants a 24 base chance for every ult hit to reduce the enemy's defense by 16% for 3 turns. This won't stack. Considering he gives himself 60% effect hit rate, versus 40% effect resistance enemies, he has a 23% chance each hit. At 10 hits, this gives us a 92% chance versus one enemy. As his ult is a bounce and you're rarely versus just one enemy, the death shred is not very reliable. His E4 increases the damage multiplier on each ult hit by 6%, combining with his E3's ult level increase for a grand total of 1062% of his attack, during his ultimate if he's versus 5 enemies. However, multiply values are not everything. Finally, his E6 will grant himself a 30% damage buff when using his ultimate until the end of his turn. 
It will also recover one skill point the next time he skills after ulting, which will allow his first skill to consume one skill point for his talent and then recover it immediately, which will ease skill point usage for the team. Now for builds, we will discuss play styles first and choose the relics accordingly. So first you have the standard hyper carry DPS playstyle, he will be spamming skill and his ultimate with high buffs on him. I ran this and whilst it works, why bother unless you really love the character. The damage isn't too amazing and his self buffs aren't that extraordinary. His kit seems to veer towards more of a sub DPS playstyle anyway. So secondly you have this sub DPS playstyle, you let the main DPS consume skill points and Misha will supply them with his basics, providing some form of damage on his ultimate. Misha can provide sustain in the form of enemy freezes and damage amp in the form of defense shred from E2 onwards. His breaks can do some damage despite the weak ice multiplier and with raw may you can do even more. All I can say is I wish destruction units had a better cone for this kind of playstyle like a pass key or a resolution shines. For these two DPS playstyles all you'll be going for is damage. The pioneer set is the best relic set for that and he can contribute to the crit value doubling with his ultimate. He will fulfill two debuff conditions alone at E2 as well, and allies and breaks can get to the third debuff needed. The Ice 4 piece is a good alternative and probably more consistent, and DPS 2 piece combos can be mixed if not. For plain ornaments, you can go anything, it will depend on substats. You want to go for a crit body, speed boots, ice damage orb, and an attack percent rope aiming for 2.5k attack, 135 speed, and an 80 to 130 crit ratio considering his A6. If you go for a more supportive Misha, some options are just going for Thief for the energy, for Wind for more actions, or for Healer for the skill point. I prefer for Wind as he can get his ultimate pretty easily, and more actions will mean more skill points generated and more freezes. For Planars, you can go something like a Broken Kill or Panaconi. You'd go Effect Hit Rate Chest, Speed Boots, Ice Damage Orb, and an Energy Rope. You'd still want Crit and Attack in subs, some Speed, and some Effect Hit Rate here and there. This is just prioritizing effect hit rate and energy over tons of crit and attack percent, ensuring high debuff chances over some extra damage. Since in these comps, on this build, you'd be running him as a sustaining sub DPS and his damage won't matter all that much. As for light cones, his best in slot will be on the fall of an Eon. Most 4 star and 5 star light cones afterwards are just going to be a decent option on Misha, but all below Eon. Lune's light cone is the only thing that will be beating Eon, and it is in cases where your basic attack spamming. Unfortunately, his new catcher cone, Indelible Promise, is not that great. He will gain a 2 turn 30% crit rate buff on ultimate, but the other part of the passive is non existent for crit based damage. Break effect can boost his ice breaks, but they already do small damage, so you'd have to break a ton if you want this to be Eon tier. This light cone can also be used in that support build for the break effect. So, comment below what kind of build you think suits Misha best, but it's cool to know he has some variety depending on how you want to build him. For some energy rotations, I try to find interesting and different ones. With skill spam, he gets his ultimate back up in 3 turns. His skill will be activating his energy generation for himself. Adding a basic at the end requires 6 ally talent procs or 6 skill points consumed by allies. If you want to run skill point neutral, you get your ultimate back in 4 turns without any ally intervention. If you want to basic spam, it only takes 4 turns too, provided your allies consume 8 skill points in that period, which is very doable. If you basic spam with an energy rope, you can drop to 3 turns provided allies consume 10 skill points in that duration. What his best rotation will be depends on your playstyle. So now onto his pros and cons. For pros, his ult freeze chance is amazing on single target and it's sometimes clutch on multiple enemies. This doubles with the fact that he has decent energy generation and a very low energy cost. He also has very high toughness damage on his ult, allowing for even more freezes versus ice weak. His ultimate also has high multipliers when hitting mag stacks, getting even better at E1, E3, and E4. He also doesn't need to consume any skill points to max out his hits, which means he can be a skill point generator that still brings in some damage. Finally, I'd say he scales decently on Eidolons, they either provide consistently good damage bonuses or new utility and more damage on top. For cons, his ults hits per action max out way too fast from my experience, and so if you are running him sub DPS and you're not getting your ult that fast, you're sitting on a lot of wasted potential. His ult is also bounce and thus completely RNG for your damage and debuffs in any A weak encounters. In single target, he is very reliable and strong for this, but when more enemies come into play, you'll be missing out. Finally, the fact that he does so many different things means he won't really excel in any of them. During my hypercarry tests, he wasn't Shui Yi level, 
during my sub DPS tests, I'd prefer just using a harmony. I would just say that the role he fulfills as a freezer sub DPS isn't needed on my account, but maybe you'd want it on yours. Maybe with these scary new enemies, we'll want those freezers much more over just more damage. Anyway, let's finish with some synergies. I first like the Ruan Mei and Misha core. You get even higher toughness damage, even more delay, even more break damage, and so versus Ice Week, I doubt you'd even need a sustain. Ruan Mei is also the premier dual DPS buffer, which is perfect for Misha's role in this team. The main DPS will also get massive damage benefits, but so will Misha on top of this additional freeze power. If you do manage to run no sustain with this team, carrying a Pella on top means Ice Week content will not be moving, and your main DPS will be doing tons of damage. Going off of the whole make enemies not move idea, Walt is a pretty cool synergy as he loves enemies not moving and can enable this delay playstyle even more. He can be run as a hyper carry, and with Misha and perhaps a Ruan Mei, you wouldn't need a sustain in most scenarios, allowing for a secondary buffer for Welt or a dual DPS buffer if Misha is going for a DPS build. Another dual DPS buffer I like a lot is Yukong. She provides a lot of various stats, meaning his stat line doesn't need as much investment. You can tune your Yukong to act in front of both DPS, and if you can time her ultimate's uptime to proc on your 2 DPS burst action, the enemy dies pretty easily. I like Hanya too as she can allow Misha to use his skill, easily max out his hits per action, generate way more energy, all whilst not really consuming many skill points thanks to Hanya's burden mark. If you run a main DPS, I found Tingyun was very fun to use. He generates a lot of hits per action when skill spamming so you can max out his ultimate and then instantly use it. His technique also helps a lot with this on the first alt rotations. Four main DPS that you can run with them, it's kind of nearly everyone. The thing is these units probably prefer a harmony more, but if you're fine on damage, Misha will bring some awesome sustained power. Some units like Herta and Yan Ching will benefit from the frozen enemies to increase their damage, which is pretty nice. For Yan Ching specifically, the fact that enemies won't attack as much is also nice for him. This could also be used in the same way for Arlen. Some units use a lot of skill points on their turn, like Ching Chui and Imbibe to Lune, which will allow for even easier ult hit maxing for Misha. Some units like enemies being stuck in the Middle Ages, like Crit Sushang and Welt. Units I'd avoid running with him though are ones that enjoy being hit for their damage, those being Clara and Blade. So I hope this video helps you 5 star pillars that might have pulled tons of Misha's, but also to any Misha enjoys. And let me know how you plan to use him. Hopefully he gets a nice ending in the story too. Thank you to all my amazing YouTube members, thanks for watching and have a good day.